Hey guys, it's Mike from Development, and we're going to pick up here and start off in this tutorial uh, editing our tic-tac-toe game.java file, and then we're going to look into the tic-tac-toe tutorial activity.java file. And if we happen to get both of those done in this video, we'll try to go ahead and finish out the, uh, the main menu screen.java. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, open up your source. Let's go into tic-tac-toe game. There's not a lot we need to change in here, just a few things. So, <clears throat> once you got that open, we will actually go and the top here. We'll look at the way that the uh, static final characters right here. We have a human player and an android player currently, but we're going to actually change that to player one and player two. So just hide over that. Player one. And then player two. That, there would be different ways you could edit the code that we have to where uh, it would support a local multiplayer, but this is going to be a pretty quick way of doing it. So um, again, you could probably optimize this a lot better uh, if you sat down with it and went through it a little bit more. So the next thing we need to do, since we changed to player one and player two, so just scroll down here and you'll see these red underlines. So we just put our mouse over human player. And we'll go down and it says change to player one. It's going to change all instances of that to player one. And with Android player, put your mouse over it. Change to player two. And you should scroll down here. You should see everything's been changed now. So that's all we need to do in that file. So go ahead and just save that. And close it. Now let's open up the tic-tac-toe tutorial activity. Now you'll notice here we already have an error because before we change the game file, but we'll, we'll get everything fixed, so don't worry about that. Alright, so then we're going to need to add a few things in here. First off, we're going to have to um, add in a few extra text views and change a few names. So the first thing we'll do here is mHumanCount. We don't want that as mHumanCount anymore. We want that into player one count change that. Um, then when, instead of Android count, we're going to want to put in player2 count. And let's go ahead and add uh, two new uh, items here. So private text view. Now if you remember at the bottom of uh, the screen where it shows the uh, how many times somebody's won, right now it says human and Android. Well we're going to have to but make sure that we can change that so when it's in a, a multiplayer mode that it's, it's player one and player two. So to do that we're going to have to call those two uh, text views uh, down there and change the text properties of them. So we're going to make the first one in player one text and we'll make the next one in player two text. Alright so now that we got these set up we're going to go down under the uh, the counters here and change this from M human counter to M player one counter. This from Android counter to player two counter. Okay, and uh, right here where we have M human first, we're going to actually change that to player one first. And we need to um, add a few things in here some more boolean values so private boolean m is single player equals false and private boolean m is player one turn equals true and then of course the m game over to tell us when the game is over all right so now we have that we'll come over here now one thing that we do want to add is uh, like we did before we want to take that title out we don't want the title in there anymore so go ahead and just click right here after where it says saved instant state right after the, the semicolon and let's put in request window feature is window dot feature no title semicolon so now we're going to take away that little title bar that we don't really want anymore anyway so um, now what we need to do is we're going to um, we're going to set up the text views now, and later on we're going to have to pass in the way that we're going to work this is we're, it's going to be required to pass in a parameter, and I'll show you how to do that from another activity, 
and that way it can tell us, you know, hey, are they starting a single player game or are they starting uh, a local multiplayer game. But right now we don't need to worry about that, so let's scroll on down here to our text views. You're going to see a lot of uh, red underlines here. Well, the cool thing about this is we don't really have to do much with it. All we got to do is put our mouse over it and then it'll, we can change it. So we want this right here to be player one count. And Android is going to be player two count. Now make sure you use count and not text because we got to make sure everything stays in the proper order here. Now that we've changed that, uh, before we go on down to change the rest, let's go ahead and add what we need here in these text views. Uh, we're going to need to pull out um, those two views at the bottom that we are talking about, the one that says human, one that says android. That way we can make sure it says the proper names down there. So let's go ahead and pull those out. We call it in player one text. And we're going to be pulling the text view. And find view by id. R dot id dot and I think we called it player one, right? What do we call it? Um, or no, it would be human because it would still be the same thing from the. Now the reason it's human is because we didn't change it in um, inside of our layout. So if you want to do that just for consistency, you can. Player two text equals text view find by ID find view by ID, and this one right here is going to be Android. Like I said, you can go in there and you can change it. It's just uh, all you gotta do is go into your layout down to the very bottom there where it says human and android and change those IDs from human and android to player one, player two, and we can plug it in like that if you don't want. Uh, but it's gonna work like this. So now that we have that, let's go on down here to where our counters display. You're gonna see that when we change the player one count here and the, and the player two count, it automatically updated these two sections. But now it's, it's asking what this is gonna be. These are the strings, um, uh, and what we changed those to was uh, player one counter and player two counter. So we need to put a uh, mouse over that. Scroll down here somewhere. There we go. Change the M player one counter. Put your mouse over the Android counter here, and scroll down to change to player two counter. All right. So now we got that fixed. That should be all we need to do there. And then what we're going to do is scroll down here. Now we're actually going to change this uh, here in a little bit to accept a game type. That's going to be able to pass in by a boolean value. And what that boolean value tells us is which kind of game that we're going to play. But we don't need to do that yet. So let's go. Uh, let's go on down here. Yeah, let's see. And again, we're going to, have to change it right here as well. And so let's go on down to start new game. Now when we're inside here, you'll see that um, right now we don't have any parameters passed in, which is why these up here work, because you see they don't require any parameters. But we're going to change this. And the reason we're going to change this is so that we can tell what kind of, which game that we're going to be playing. So one way to do that would just be passing a simple Boolean value. And this would uh, allow us to tell if we're playing a single player game or not. So boolean is single and all we're going to do is remember we declared up top there uh, remember variable uh, is single player is single and you can actually some people do this right here this dot m is single player so you can, you can put this this there if you want so we'll leave it there now this right here is what this is going to do is going to take the perimeter that we passed in and it's going to change this boolean value here that we're going to be using uh, in our logic to whatever that uh, whatever that value was so now what we need to do is come down here and you're going to see that this is a very simple um, start new game here it's very simple it's just if the, if the human was first then it would do something if it wasn't then it would go ahead and set it so that the computer would go first and move and all that good stuff. But now we're going to have to change that because it, we could actually not be playing where the computer needs to move. So we'll do if is single player. Let's go ahead and close that off. So the first thing we need to do is <clears throat> we need to change M human first to it should have a red underline under. I'm not sure why I don't. I always put the extra one. 
I'm used to Visual Studio on it. I'm not used to it. put my bracket there for me. So if you put your mouse over M Human first, uh, we're going to change that uh, to M Player One first, which we put up top there. So let's go ahead and cut this code. Control X, and let's go inside of this and Control V to paste it. V is in Victor. So now, you know, if we're playing a single player game, and player one is to go first, then what we're going to want to do is um, first thing we need to do, since we could be coming from uh, a multiplayer game, we need to go to in player one text dot set text. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to set the label for us down at the bottom. So we want to say human colon. That's it. And player two text. Uh, set text. Android colon. And your quotes here and everything like that. So now what we're going to do is, you know, and this should actually be before the. Sorry about that. So just cut that out. We don't want to. It's not depending on if the player's first if we set that or not. So. And that's a good thing to do about your code if you, when you're putting it in, you read it back to yourself. So, if we're playing a single player game, we need to set the text of the text views at the bottom to human and android since you'll be playing the computer. Then, if the player is supposed to go first, we're going to go ahead and set that text view uh, down there to say, you know, the little notification text box we have right under the board. We're going to set that just like before uh, r.string.first human saying, okay, human's got to go first. And I think that actually comes out to you first. And then, um, if it's not the player to turn to go first, the computer's going to go first, which is probably you won't even get to see because it's going to be so quick. And then you're going to get a computer move, then set the move the computer made. But we need to change Android player here to player two. And this right here is one of the reasons why when we change this tic tac toe uh, activity, this tic tac toe game right here. From player from human and Android to player one, player two. The reason you saw this red X pop up here is because Android player doesn't exist anymore. So we need to go ahead and change that here to player two. And there'll be some other places that we we'll need to change, but now that any place that said Android player should say player two since we went ahead and changed that. So that's about all we have to do for to change over the logic for the single player part. But now we need to see well, what if it's a multiplayer. So we go to else. Now all this code here is going to deal with if we're in a local multiplayer. So what do we need to do if we're in a multiplayer? It's not going to be a whole lot different than this, so we can just copy and paste. It's really going to be very similar. The thing is we don't need the human to, or the computer to move. The first thing that we're going to do is change this from human to player one. And then change Android to player two. So if the player one's supposed to go first, then we want to want to change this string because we don't want it to say you first because they won't know which person's supposed to go. So string dot. Yeah, I think we taught turn player one. Yep, turn player one. And then of course we'll set that the player one should not go first next time. And then we'll go into else here. We don't need this code because that was with the comp making the computer move we don't need that so then we'll need to change this one to turn player two and I'll just go ahead and show you that it's in our list here dot and underscore player two okay and then we'll need to make sure that player one will go first next time so set that to true alright so that's all we have to do to update our start new game method and now let's see if we got time here. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're at about 15 minutes. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and we'll stop here. And then um, in the next video we'll pick up and finish out this, uh, this file. And hopefully be able to go ahead and get into the main menu screen. That should be our last video. If it spans one more video then we'll go ahead and, and do one more. But it shouldn't be any more than one to two more videos. And we should be done with this uh, setting our local multiplayer up. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.